Hey everyone, welcome to the Top 10 list. Welcome to my Top 10 favorite anime movies of the 1980s, from 1980 to 1989. Yes, as you saw my other previous Top 10 list, when I did all my Top 10 favorite anime movies of each decade, all of this is going to be leading to my favorite anime films of all time. I've been doing all the decades. I did the 2010s, 2000s, 90s, and now it's the 80s turn, yes. A lot of these movies, I'll just say up front, I'm going to talk about them very quickly. I'm going to run through them very fast because... All of these movies that are on my top 10, I have talked quite a bit about on this channel. If you know my channel very well, then you'll know exactly what films will be on this top 10 list. I've talked about these movies to death, so I'm just going to run through them very fast. This is going to be a pretty quick top 10 list, hopefully. I tend, I tend to rabble on when I do these top 10 lists. I'll try not to do this top 10 list because, again, I've talked about these movies before. You all know I love these movies, so yeah, let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. Here's my top 10 favorite animated movies of the 1980s and for top 10 list you gotta have your honorable mentions my honorable mentions are my neighbor totoro all dogs go to heaven the brave little toaster bon voyage charlie brown nausicaa valley in the wind the fox and the hound and the land before time all great films just give me the top 10 list but they made my top 10 is my number 10 my number 10 is a Christmas movie, Mickey's A Christmas Carol. Mickey's Christmas Carol is so good. It's a very short film. It's about 45 minutes long. I love Christmas Carol. It's not my favorite adaptation of Christmas Carol. It's no George C. Scott or Muppets, but it's still a great, great movie. It's got Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Daffy Duck. It's got all the great characters of the Mickey Mouse cartoon. It, it, it's got Goofy. All of them is, is just a really enjoyable film. It does have comedy, but it has it captures more of the spirit of the Charles Dickens novel, but with Mickey Mouse and the whole gang, and it's really good. It's well animated. It's well, it's got atmosphere. It's got the Christmas spirit, the Christmas feel and stuff. He does everyone does a really good job in this movie, especially Mickey Mouse himself. And I love Mickey. I love all these characters. I love this story. It's a timeless story, and the fact that Mickey Mouse did a Christmas Carol is just amazing, and I love it. Coming number nine is The Great Mouse Detective. The Great Mouse Detective is a great film. This is during the Disney Dark Age. It was one of the best films, probably the best film during the Dark Age of Disney. It's awesome. It's a Sherlock Holmes story, but with mice. That sounds amazing. The characters are amazing. The lead characters are fantastic. It has Vincent Price as the villain Radigan with one of the one of the best kick-ass villain songs. It's awesome. It's got a crazy climax. Great mystery. Great thrills. Great characters. Great animation. Just a fun movie. If you love Sherlock Holmes, you'll love this. Coming number eight is an American Tale. Yes, Five Oh my God, that. Cutest character ever in an animated movie, or at least one of them. It's a freaking mouse with a big hat, and he just wants to find his family. Poor Fievel. They ruined it with a sequel. I hate the sequel, but An American Tale, directed by Don Bluth. It's about a mice. Him and his family are going on a trip. He gets lost. He's going on this adventure to go find his family. It is cute, adorable, sad, heart-wrenching, and just amazing. The characters are great. The animation's great. The songs are great. Fievel's probably the cutest thing I have ever seen. He's adorable. You just want him to find your parents. This will t t this will tear at the heartstrings, and it's just so great. I grew up with this movie. I love this movie. Of course, it's on the top ten list. Coming number seven is Akira. Yes, Akira or Akira, whatever you want to call it. It's great. Uh, again, a film I've talked about. Everyone knows I praise this film. It's great. I love the characters. I love this bizarre, twisted story. If you love motorcycle gangs, you love twisted alien stories, you love almost sort of dystopian, post-apocalyptic kind of films, you'll love this movie, especially if you love Japanese anime films. The animation is gorgeous. The way they do the landscapes in the city in this film is amazing. The sequences of the motorcycles are fantastic. Just the way they do the movements and the designs is gorgeous and amazing. Seeing this character slowly getting, turning into this creature, this monster, is terrifying. It's a great story, interesting characters, it's dark, it's twisted, it's awesome. I absolutely love it. One of my favorites. Coming number six is Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky is directed, written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki, one of his funnest films. This is just a great adventure, action adventure film. A guy finding a princess fall from the sky and they go on this quest with each other. They have to, you know, uh, escape from these evil bandits. You got James Vanderbeek in the film in the English dub. He actually does a good job. It's just, you go to these different worlds, it's a great fantasy, sci-fi, action, adventure story. If you love good swashbuckling action, just a fun adventure story, you love Japanese anime films, you love Miyazaki, this movie is for you. It's one of my favorites. I have so much fun with it. Absolutely love it. 
Coming number five is Grave of the Fireflies. Grave of the Fireflies is depressing, it's dark, it's sad, it's a bit sick at times. It's about Hiroshima. I think I, that's all I need to say, right? It's about this brother and sister, and they're basically making their way through all the tragedies of Hiroshima and stuff. The bomb went off, all these people are suffering and stuff. I'm not going to spoil the ending because it's depressing as fuck, but... It's great. This movie is fantastic. The characters, the brother does seem a bit unlikable at times, but you understand his reasoning of why he has to do certain things. The sister is fantastic. Uh, the imagery is dark and disturbing. Definitely not a kid's movie, but it's so well done. The way they do the lights, the way they do some of the smoke in this, in this movie is amazing. The atmosphere is brilliant. It is a very atmospheric, very moving film. If this does not make you cry, then I don't know what will. This is this is the Schindler's List of Japanese animated films. It is a hard watch, but it is damn worth it. It is great. Coming number four is The Little Mermaid. Yes, under the sea, under the sea, poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. I love, I love The Little Mermaid. It's one of my favorite animated Disney films of all time. Despite what I feel about Ariel sometimes, I don't hate Ariel. I just think she's a very flawed character, and she is not one of the best Disney princesses out there. She is no Belle. She is no Jasmine. She's no even no Moana. She is a likable character, but she's also a very spoiled character. She's my only, like, minor gripe about Little Mermaid. I love The Little Mermaid. The animation is gorgeous. The way they do the sea, uh, all under the sea scenes, with all the sea creatures and stuff is beautiful. I love these characters. I love King Triton. I love Flounder. I love Sebastian. I even enjoy Ariel. Eric, she has great chemistry with Eric. Ursula is fantastic. A great villain. Ursula. Eric, get away from her. <laughs> She's a great villain with a great kick-ass villain number. Uh, I love this movie. I love the story. Yes, it's a little weird that she falls in love with a guy just by seeing him, but you know what? You buy the romance. You buy their chemistry. You buy the connection between these two characters. It's a great movie. It's got lots of laughs. It's got a great fun story. It's heartwarming. It's great for kids. It's great for adults. It's great for everyone because it's awesome. Part of your world. Coming number three is a complete cheat. I'm very well, I'm very aware that this is cheating, but I love this film so much, and it is technically a half animated movie. I'm still gonna count it anyways because even when you look at the animated category, this movie is in the animated genre, even though it's not completely an animated film. But fuck it, I'm gonna count it anyways, and that's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yep. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I know it's a live action movie blended with animation stuff, and everyone's like, well, then doesn't Mary Poppins count? No. Mary Poppins does not count because there's only sequences when there's animated film. There's animated animation in the film. And that's basically like one scene when they go into the, you know, the wheel the the world with the penguins and shit and the frickin' horses and shit. Just one sequence. This entire movie is animated and live action. The movie even begins with animation stuff. It's still an animated film, but it's a live-action film as well. So, I'm going to still count it, and it's amazing. If Back to the Future did not exist, this would be my favorite Zemeckis film, but it's a runner-up for best Zemeckis film. Robert Zemeckis, the way he directed this movie was fantastic. The blend of CG with the animation and the live-action people is fantastic. I love it. I love Judge Doom. Christopher Lloyd, fantastic. Jessica Rabbit, very attractive. Roger Rabbit's really enjoyable. Bob Hoskins is fantastic. His chemistry is back and forth. It is annoyances with Roger Rabbit is very funny. It's really enjoyable. It's got great slapstick. You get to see all these great characters, Disney characters, Mickey Mouse and stuff. Just a lot of awesome people. I love how they blended. Again, the style of animation live action was really great. Everyone wanted sequels to this. We never got it, but it's still, it's still fine. It's a great standalone film. This is just a, this is just an amazing gem that just didn't need a sequel. It's just a great film all on its own. Great action, great animation, great villain, great characters. Just an amazing film. Coming number two is Kiki's Delivery Service. Yes, again, Miyazaki. This is one of my favorite Hayao Miyazaki films out there. I adore this film. I love it so freaking much. The simplicity of it. I love simple stories. Simplicity can be just brilliant if it's done right. And Miyazaki is the master of simplicity. 
This is a simple story. It's about a young girl who's a witch who goes off on her own to explore her witch powers and stuff. She goes into this town, meets this awesome wife and husband. She becomes a delivery girl for their bakery. That's it. That is literally it. About a witch arriving in a town, gets a job as a delivery girl. That is it. There's no villain. There's no bully. There's no cliches. It's a simple story about a witch. Yeah, there's a minor like, issue. She like loses her powers and stuff because she's having doubts as a witch and stuff. And that's kind of it. And then she releases her powers back at the ending to save her friend. And yeah, it's a great film. It's simple. It's beautiful. It's atmospheric. Got great animation. Great voice cast. You got Matthew Lawrence, Chris, Kirsten Dunst. Uh, well, um, uh, Phil Hartman as Gigi. I love Gigi, and just a great story. I love it. It's one of my favorite Miyazaki films of all time, and one of the best films ever. One of the best anime films of the 80s, but also one, just one of the best films in general of the 80s. And my number one favorite animated film of the 1980s is... The Secret of Nim. The Secret of Nim, Don Bluth, once again, just proves that he's an amazing, amazing animator director. He's up there with one of the best. He's up there with Brad Bird, John Lasseter, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, Makoto Shinke, Mamoru Hosodo, just a lot of the great animated directors. Don Bluth is right there. He is one who started it all, too. Oh, well, one of the people. He's not the, the one that started it all, but he's one of the one, one of the great classic ones, because all his best films are the classic ones. And Secret of Them is amazing. 1982, best year of cinema, in my opinion. I love it. I love the style. I love the darkness of it. I love the voice acting. You got Don DeLuise in this film. You got uh, Derek Jacoby in the film. Uh, a lot of great voice acting in this film. You got Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton's in the film. I love the story about this uh, this girl, this this lady mouse, Mrs. Brisby and stuff, and she doesn't realize what her husband did for the, the, the rat community and stuff. And basically it's moving day, she needs to move her house, and she needs the help of Nicodemus and all the rats of Nim to help move her house and help save her family and help get her little uh, little her little son, Timothy, better and stuff. And I love this story. I love the animation. I love how atmospheric it is. It is dark. It's violent. There's bloody and graphic scenes. I love Nicodemus. I love Mrs. Brisby. The Great Owl. The design of the Great Owl is amazing. I love uh, Jeremy. Jeremy's awesome. He's very funny. And I just love Mr. Ages. This is great too. Even the kids are all great. And it's the style, the animation, the story. It's just a great, dark, grim story. And hands down, the best anime film I have ever watched in the 1980s. So yeah, that was my top 10 favorite animated films of the 1980s. Yes, so in the please tell me, did you read this top 10 list? If not, what are your top 10 favorite animated films of the 1980s from 1980 to 1989? Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.